Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the related and the related table functions in DAX. So I have a quick presentation for you here. Not too many slides, just about two slides. Let's just take a look. The related function is equivalent of writing a VLOOKUP in Excel. Now, just a few things to note. The related function is only going to work when there is an active relationship between two tables and the relationship should be one to many relationship. You can take a look that we have a products table here where the product code is linked to the product ID in the sales table. This is a one to many relationship. In this scenario, the related function is going to work just fine. And second is that the related function is only going to work in the sales table. Obviously, you will write the VLOOKUP in the sales table to get the price or the commission or the category from the products table. So the related function only works on the many side of the relationship rather than on the one side of the relationship. Moving on quickly to related table function, just the basics here. Related table function works with many to many, many to one or one to one relationships just fine, but there should be some kind of relationship between the two tables. And the related table function does not give you a single value like the related function. It gives you actually a table. All right, without any further ado, let's just take a look as to how these functions work. All right, I'm in Power BI and we have two tables loaded here. We have the sales table and we have the products table. Let's just take a look. The sales table has pretty standard columns. Now what links to the products table is the product ID. That means we have duplicate product IDs here. One product could have sold multiple times, but in the products table, we have unique product code, which is nothing but the product ID. And if you take a look at the relationship tab, the products ID is linked from the sales table to the products table. We have unique here, that means one, and we have uh, star here, that means many. Now, like I said, there needs to be a relationship between the two tables, we have it. And the related function is only going to work in the many side of the relationship, which is my sales table. Let's just write a simple VLOOKUP formula. So I'm gonna create a new column. Let's just call this column as a price lookup. So I'm gonna say equals to related. Related function will only accept one input. That means it's gonna ask you that which column do you want from the related table. So I'm gonna say that I want the price column I write that, I close the bracket, I press enter, and automatically it will go look up for this product ID in the products table, get you the price. As simple as that, nothing too complicated. Now, there are a couple of things to understand is that, let's say for example, you can see that as soon as I start writing the related function, it gives me all these suggestions. These suggestions are nothing but the columns of the products table. Now, if in case you have not created the relationship between two tables, you are not going to get these suggestions. Second, if you try to write the related function in the products table, that means if I try to create a column here, I try to write the related function, and this is not going to give me any suggestions because this is the many side of the relationship. Now, what a lot of people do is they try to write a formula or a measure using related, and maybe they face a difficulty. So let's just take a look at how do you use the related function in a measure. So I'm going to go on my sales table, right click and say a new measure. And let's just say that uh, I want to make a measure for total sales because we already have the units. Uh, we have the price in the products table. Multiplying these two is going to give me the total sales. If you have been trying to write a related function in a measure and the first thing that you do is you write the related function and it does not show you any suggestions, uh, you're making a mistake. Note that the measure is not the row of the sales table, right? So if I just go back to the sales table and help you understand better, here if you take a look, we have written the VLOOKUP or the related function in every single row of the sales table. But when you're writing in the measure, this measure is not the row of the sales table. We have to create a row context and you can do that using any iterator function in Excel. For example, SUMX or a MAXX or a filter and something like that. So for now, I'm going to use a SUMX function. Uh, I'm going to say, hey, why don't you go in every single row of the sales table? So I'm just going to mention the sales table and then it asks me for an expression. Now in every single row of the sales table, I am going to write a VLOOKUP. Now the SUMX allows me to do a row by row calculations. That's why the related function starts to work now I'm going to say hey get the price one input close the bracket multiply that with the units of the sales table and then that gives me the total sales now if I drag that in my uh, region across the sales table I'm going to get my total sales value in case you do not know how to write the sumx function I'm going to leave a link to another video which is where I've explained 
how does SUMX work step by step. Now that we have understood how to work with the related function, let's just take a look at the related table function. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my products table and just go try to write the related table function there. Now remember what I said about related table function. I said that for writing a related table function, you need to have any kind of relationship, one to one, one to many, many to many. So we have a one to many relationship between the products and the sales table. And I'm going to write related table function in the one side of the relationship. So I'm going to right click here and let's just create a new column and I'm going to write related table and I'm just going to mention the entire table sales. You can see that the related table function only asks you for one input, which is the table. I'm just going to close the bracket. As soon as I press enter, you are trying to expect an answer, but this would not give you an answer. This would rather give you an error. Remember what I said about related table function that the related table function always gives you an entire table. And obviously uh, in one particular cell here, an entire table cannot fit in. So it gives you an error that uh, this is not giving you a scalar or a single value. That's why this formula returns an error. Now, if you're writing the related table function on the one side of the relationship, which is the products table, which is where you have uniques and trying to fetch the many side of the relationship, which is the sales, what this is going to do is this is going to follow the relationship. So we already have a relationship between the product code and the product ID of the sales table. So we have the first product code as FSEBK. Let me just quickly go to my sales table. In the sales table in the product ID column, I'm going to apply a filter to FSEBK, click on OK. And I now have the sales table filter to only that particular product. This is exactly what the related table function is going to do. It's going to follow that relationship, filter the sales table to only that particular product. And let's just take a look at how many rows do we have. So at the bottom, if you take a look, we have 84 rows here in this table. Now, this entire 84 rows is being captured by this formula right here and in the first cell it has 84 rows of data so obviously it cannot throw the entire 84 rows of data but if I try to aggregate the table if I just wrap the table around the count rows function you can see the count rows accepts a table related table gives you a table that works absolutely fine so it's just it's just saying that hey why don't you count the number of rows which are there in the related sales table I'm gonna press enter and like you would expect this would give you 84 rows this is also a sort of a count if if you may call it that you would probably do it in Excel. Let's just go now write the related table function, in the sales table. Let's just see what happens. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to make a new column, write a related table and get the products table right here. I'll close the bracket, press enter. Now, because every single product is only mentioned once in the products table, this is going to give you one across all the rows. I press enter. Obviously, this is going to give me an error because this is a table. I just want to count the number of rows in the table. So I'm just going to say count rows and then close the bracket, press enter. And what I get is one all across. All right, apart from the sales table and the products table, I have two more tables. There is table one and there is table two. Remember, both the tables have just one column uh, where I have some numbers, random numbers, and I have created a relationship between these two numbers. At both the tables, in both the columns, the number are duplicated. That means you would have a duplicate here and you would have a duplicate here. Therefore, I have a many to many relationship. Now, let's just go write the related table function in table one. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here, say a new column. And I'm just going to say that I want to write a related table. Now, let me just try to get the table number two, close the bracket. Of, of course, I'm just going to write count rows around that and close the bracket, press enter. Now, wherever it found 20 in table number two, it would give you a count for that. So 20 was found two times in table number two. Let's just go take a quick look in table number two. If I just quickly sort the data, you can see 20 is there two times. That's how it counted two against the 20 and therefore you have the number as two right here in table number one and the rest of the numbers are not there. Well, that's all about the related and the related table functions in Power BI DAX. Please let me know if you have any questions on this. If, if you haven't understood anything, I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks so much for sticking around and I look forward to see you in the next one. Cheers and bye-bye.